Hi YouTube, this is Eric and today we're gonna make some winning numbers. This is a request from one of my subscribers. He actually wanted a dynamic way to be able to change the numbers on a live show. So when you get the magic numbers, he wants to be able to go in and enter the numbers and should be easy to render. But as we know, Fushin, I don't know about your computer, but my computer, I've never gotten the smooth rendering on infusion I, I don't get real-time rendering i don't i don't think so we're going to see how we optimize this workflow so that we can almost render a real time what's fun about making balls this is not fun you shouldn't have made a tutorial for that but what if i told you that all the numbers on the balls are only in one text node and they're conforming with the animation so if i go onto the fusion page it might say oh that's so easy this is half of it so don't get excited yet i have already cached the balls i've rendered them out and i'm placing the texture on them and they're conforming to the animation the text is in this text node called numbers you can see i can go in there and dynamically start changing some of the figures here and they will update and we can go this is how you can cheat and make someone win or your family member win if you're the one sitting there changing the numbers you just tell them hey I'm gonna put one here so the first number is 10 and then when you go to the edit page it's truly updated all right so let's see the other half of the composition that I'm talking about so in here I have a composite called Bose main comp wow yeah low notes and I didn't want to render all of this so let's see how it works so I'm gonna start from left to right that's how I work at least so what I did was I just created a background and then created a circle so this is texture for the balls and I just created it a 3D shape, a sphere, and then I piped this texture as a map for it. Use the UV map and then I projected it onto the Z, a planar projection onto the Z axis, so it's gonna face it that way. So here, after creating that, then I needed some lightning, so some lighting in the scene. So I created this point light. So if I view this scene here, I wanted the lighting to stay on each ball. What I did is I created an image 3D and I created a point light on the left side, one top, and I matched those two point light. If I mute this ambient light you can see it's you can see it properly so you can see that if i try to disable it, you can see where the lights are so you can see the first light is here the second light is there all the way at the back over there and we still have darkness here so i use this to rotate the two lights to get it over there and there and overall i wanted it to pop up a bit so i use an ambient light now i created some reflection material here what i did was fast noise and scale the fast noise on one direction i applied a blur to it and map it into a spherical map and then i piped it into the color material for the reflective shader and then i also created another fast noise made it really grainy piped it into a bump map reduced the high scale of the bump map and i piped that one into the bump material and what i did was to use a replace node to match this reflection on top of it and by using the replace node i set all the rg and b to multiply and kept the alpha so then i just added some animation to it just added transform 3d so when i added the duplicate node I, and the reason why they're all trailing is because in the duplicate node i've set the time offset uh, to minus three that's it the balls were done it's time for rendering but i have a uv pass that i'm rendering out and i'm rendering also the rgb pass the reason is we already applied if you can see we already applied the uv map in here and i've set it to lock uvs on animated objects yeah if i have enabled this text here then it means all of them are gonna have number 15 so i can't really work even if i add another number it's all gonna take the same it's happening because you're all using individual UVs. That wasn't going to work. That's why I muted this here. So I found out the idea was to create a secondary UV that is stretched across all the balls. So I added another UV and projected it onto Z plane. I made it fit. That UV is stretching across after the duplicates are stretching across all of them. So now if we should enable this UV, look at what we see. You can see that it's not texturing them individually. It's using the texture on all of them when you put another uv it overrides it automatically so the first one is ir irrelevant i was gonna lose my initial uvs i couldn't just render it other so i have to separate this into two render passes if i move this camera here it's the same camera is piped into this 3d scene and it's piped in here as well so if you look in the render here we have the original uv mappings and i only want the stretch uvs 
rendered out here if you look at that there's no color information because if you look at the render settings i'm not rendering out gb color i'm only rendering the texture coordinates so the texture coordinates you can only view that when you come here if you view v you can see that we have the stretched uv we have a node in fusion called texture node go to add to and deep pixels we have a texture node here. It takes in a UV map and then it will pipe in a texture to map using that UV information. So what I'm doing is I'm piping the UV. They all named texture, but the first one, the yellow one, is always the UV information. Then after doing the texture, come in here, merge it on top of this render. Yeah, I'll merge it on top of it. It's simple as that. So I set the blend mode to screen. And now in the texture, you can actually use the blend mode to add more of the shading from your original image. So normally 0 0.5 should do. In this case, I wanted the numbers to pop out. So I just set it about 0 0.8. But now it's a headache to even scrub through. So what I did then was to render the UV and the color information into EXR files. So I rendered out only the balls if i look here i'm using the channel bool and i'm taking the uv information from here and piping it down the line so now if you view here we can see we now have a uv information as well going in here as well so how to do that is very simple go in the channel building i'm copying information but not to the red green and blue that's what's coming here i'm doing nothing to all of them because i want to maintain them then in the auxiliary in the auxiliary i come on let's do it again in the auxiliary channels yeah did i say it right all right ox let's say ox it's okay in that channel i'm enabling it i'm copying u texture from the foreground fg does this into the uvs and i'm doing the same for the v as well so that's why we got that information baked into one pipe and now i'm rendering it out after i rendered out i realized that mm, then so all i need is to feed in our rgb here and feed in uv here so that means we can separate this part of composition that's great so i copied this part of it and then came out to the edit page go to an empty space and i went to effects bring the fresh composition here and in that fresh composition i simply paste that second half of the composition and pipe it in here uh, let's view it also let's try and uncheck this one here right so what we need here is to pipe in a uv to the texture and then pipe in the color information lucky enough we've already rendered that so i went to load those information and i saved it as ball spin and we've saved ourselves all the calculations so now we got our color information and the uv information back in place so we're back in business boss baby so what we're going to do is now pipe in the color information to the color and then we pipe in same uh information to the texture the texture is looking for is the uv information so it will take that and we've got that in this so we just it's okay to pipe it in if i should view the texture alone you can see that we have a bit of the color information the reason is because when you go to the texture settings as well as telling you the blend mode if we set it initially when you use the texture node it's going to set it to one so you won't see anything if the texture is conforming i'll show you why so what i did was i created a very big texture because my uvs are stretching from here to here i created a background node and that background made it 500 by 500 initially so i multiplied the weight by six because i have six balls and what i'm doing is i'm putting the text onto when you hit tab in the text node it creates these lines for you that you can click here to align or to the left or right but i leave it into the middle and you can actually hold the those green lines there to reposition them and it's so so cool it helped me a lot to achieve this effect so if i look in the texture here you can see that i can dynamically go in there and reposition whatever i want to do and that should work perfectly so what i did that then i made it on top of the original image so if you want your text to blend in you can always go to the texture and then lower the um, blend mode or if you want it to pop up because it all the way to one i'm going to leave it on a 0.8 furthermore added a color correction to grade it and then i created this background it's just a plain blue background with some ellipse that i'm feathering it done and i'm making the balls on top of it and a secondary color grading to give it another touch and let it pop out and give it more blue which kind of color and that's it i rendered it out all right guys so i've gone ahead to create a template for this so if you open the folder if you download the template 
which the link is going to be on my Patreon page. You're going to get these files in the folder. It's called the main balls comp and then balls red texturing. I just gave you this extra as a backup or if you wanted to use it in Fusion. But then the main template file for, for Resolve is this load to numbers uh, DRA. Uh, you can right click on this page and go to, remember not import project but restore project archive. Yeah. Then you're going to choose that load to number DRA file. So right now it's imported it and then we can duplicate to open it. So I've got two folders, edit and render. The render has the timeline, that's the timeline you're seeing here. If you go to the edit, we've got the same thing. We've got Bose main comp and then boss retexturing comp. If you drive it here, we've just created a different composition based on the content of this composition. So this will still stay intact. But you can see that nothing is happening. Got the graphics, but the balls are not here. If we go into the Fusion page, first thing that you have to do is you have to load the rendered file let's see how we can do that I'm gonna go back make sure you're not on any composition you're on empty space uh, double click on the main balls comps it, it brings you here to the saver the export as well I've also commented it all you have to do is to click that saver and then browse to where you want to save the file so you give it a name go to fusion and say render all savers it's gonna render that file once that has been rendered now you can come back to this composite and go to the fishing page and now we can go to the loader and then load the rendered file so i'm gonna choose the explode one the update it perfectly and you can go in here and put in your numbers wherever you want however you want to we can go to the edit page it should be there for you so you can drag as many times as you want or you can even make a copy of this and paste it will always going to create a different uh, version for you so in this version i can just go into the fusion page i can load a different um, animation this time i'm going to load the ball spin so that one is going to give me that animation so you can see we have different kind of animation here and of course you can also go in there and change anything the text or whatever this is the winning number so for instance you can change this to maybe power numbers the little is here let's say change this to draw uh let's say i don't want this line at the bottom i can just select it that's the one here i can mute it also you can go ahead and change the colors the background elements are here so you can see the background color you can just uh, change it to whatever color they you desire and if you want to change the ball colors they are also here this is the balls coming in from here you can use a hue the saturation to just change the colors to your taste whatever you like uh, or you can also change the colors before you render the balls that's it so see you next time